What's up, everybody? Welcome to some black blue zombies. <laughs> Hope you're ready to eat some brains. I am. Let's get the graveyard squared up. As far as our opening hand goes, yeah, we can go to keep on this one. We've got the catacombs, vapor snag, got uh, all of our little splash colors. Yeah, we'll go and keep them. Why not? Make this a nice little, nice little video. We do need the zombie lord. Once we get, if we can find diagraph captain, then we'll be square. Um, let's go ahead and get the. Uh, let's just go ahead and crack the catacombs. Let's go and get this down. Let's grab that. Uh, grab that watery grave. Let's go and shock that in. Yes, we're gonna go and pay two. Get the diagraph down. Anything else? Now we're going to go and pass the turn. Okay, so next time we're looking at going for the Videlican Ghoul. Um, then we can follow up with a little zombie outlander, kind of depending on what our opponent's got going on. But uh, but yeah, you can see at our opening hand, this is pretty much the reason why we're splashing blue. Um, one of the we're splashing for zombie outlander, which has protection from green, which allows us to get into a spot. To, let's say we have a couple zombie lords out there, and we're playing against uh, Obzon or Jund or something like that, and there's Tarmogoyfs we just can't really push through. Um, then we're going to be able to get down the outlander and then kind of push past some of the, our opponent's creatures. We're also running Videlican Ghoul, so whenever becomes blocked, defending player loses four life. So what we're hoping to do with the ghoul is get it down, get a couple zombie lords going, and then whenever it does become blocked, they're going to lose that four life. So we get into spots where we can kind of push in a little bit of extra combat damage, so that's always cool. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get the swamp down. Let's go and come in hot for two. It's going to put our opponent down to 15. And then we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably go and lead off with the ghoul. I think I'm okay with that. Alright, so we're going to put him down to uh, 15. Let's go and go for the ghoul. And the next turn, if we have the land drop, we'll be able to dump our hand out between the ghoul and the dread wonder and kind of start swinging it from there. But yeah, and also, the other uh, card that we're splashing for in this deck is the Diagraph Captain, which is a zombie lord. And it has a blood artist effect that says whenever a zombie you control dies, target a player loses one life and you gain one life. So, uh, there's not a ton of board wipes in modern, per se, but um, you do get into a spot to where if they do have some sort of damnation or some Supreme Verdict style stuff that you can... Uh, you can get that down and uh, blow them up. Looks like we're playing against Soul Tide. Cool, man. Sorry, it threw me for a loop for a second. I was expecting it to be Grixis or uh, Jund, actually. But no, excuse me. We're playing against Soul Tide. All right, man. I love playing against Soul Tide. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see what we can draw into. Draw into Blood Scrivener. Let's go and come in off for two. It's going to put him down to 10. Look at that Diagraph Ghoul. Putting in some work. All right, going to put him down to 10. I think at this point, um, we could go. How do we know secret? We'll be getting in for four, which is going to put him down to six next turn. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go for the ghoul. I like... Keep, keep, you know, they're at ten life. If they do get some sort of blocker out there, we can swing with the ghoul. At least get in for one. And then, um, you know, eventually we're going to hit our our, uh, our third lane, and then we can get the rest of our creatures out and start swinging in. But yeah, this uh, Videlican ghoul, man, it's been um, surprisingly... <laughs> I mean, on paper, it doesn't look like the best card in the world. But... Uh, I don't know, it's pretty good. It's not that bad. Especially if you get a couple zombie lords on it. You know, you're pushing in for about three, you know, maybe two or three damage when you're swinging in with it. So, it just creates this interesting board state for your opponent. Alright, they do hit the land drop, hit the misty on turn three. Let's see if they'll have anything else to go for the turn. If not, we'll be swinging in for three next turn, put them down to seven. Now, this might be... We've seen Inquisition, we've seen Fatal Push, and we got a... It might be Death Shadow Soul Tie. Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Okay. We're probably going to see a minus two ability. Each player discards a card. Excuse me. Let's go and chunk the... I think on this one... I'll probably go and chunk the Zombie Outlander. Well, we get into spots where they get something like Tarmogoyf down. Let's go and put the Dread Wonder in the graveyard. I'm okay with that. Put the Dread Wonder in the graveyard. That way we can uh, potentially swing in. We'd actually go for the Zombie Outlander, get that down, and kind of put us into spots where we can kind of swing in at Liliana. See, we draw for the turn. Watery Grave. Okay. I was going to come in hot at Liliana. We're coming across for three. Puts him down to four. They have the plus on Liliana again next turn. We sack a creature. Eh, let's go up top, man. We need to close this out. Yeah, let's go up top. All right. We're going up top for three. It's going to put him down to four. And then let's go ahead and go for the... Let's go for the Zombie Outlander. Well, we're going to be hellbent with Blood Scrivener when they activate Liliana. Let's actually go, let's go Blood Scrivener. That way we're going to draw an extra card. Maybe we can hit something else like a Zombie Lord or something. Yeah, I like that play a little bit better. Okay, let's put the, I was thinking we could go Zombie Outlander in case they get some sort of creature down that allows us to kind of push past Liliana. But at this point, we're just looking to kind of close the game out. So let's go and get the Watery Grave down. Not going to pay two life. Um, we are representing Lethal. If they do go for the Liliana on the minus ability, we'll just sacrifice the uh, Videlican Ghoul. 
potentially. If they have a blocker, then they'll lose that four life. Uh, if not, then um, they're going to plus Liliana, get rid of the zombie Outlander, and then we'll be able to draw two cards off the Blood Scrivener, and they'll be able to kind of go from there. So, not too bad. Well, hopefully we'll make this work. <laughs> Man, it'd be nice to get a nice little Videlcan Ghoul win. <laughs> if they declare a blocker and get that minus four ability. But yeah, this has been... Um, I, I would venture to say that Black Blue Zombies... If I'm going to take one of the decks I've played so far, I'd, I'd probably take the Black Green so far. Black Blue's cool. It's not bad. It's definitely on the lower tier of the of these... You know, these all, all these decks are lower tier to begin with. Abrupt Decay on Blood Scrivener. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to take care of the Blood Scrivener. But yeah, I'd probably roll with... Um, it's just hard. You have the Diagraph Captain. And you want to kind of almost do a, some sort of aristocrat-style thing. And... Um, I don't know, it's a little bit different. Target player sacks a creature. Let's go ahead and sack the, um... Let's go ahead and sack the Diagraph. Okay. That way we can start pushing in with the Videlican Ghoul. And we still have the Zombie Outlander for a little bit of protection from Tarmogoyf. So hopefully we'll kind of be able to close it out. If they do block, then we'll, we'll get it. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go ahead and swing in with the Videlican Ghoul. We're going to come up top to our opponent. <laughs> Feels like we're playing draft or something. <laughs> All right, see if we got a chump block. No, we do not. All right, no, F fair enough, man. Uh, let's go ahead and go for. So we get down the zombie outlander. Yeah, I like that. Let's get down zombie outlander. And then we have the scrivener in the hand, but it is what it is. All right, so we get down the um, uh, the outlander. We have protection from green, so we're gonna be able to swing in for two. If they go for the minus two ability on Liliana, we'll just sacrifice the zombie outlander, and then we can push in again with the Videlcan Ghoul, and that'll take care of Liliana. Um, if they do have some sort of spot removal. We're going to have protection from green swinging in at three to kind of close them out. So either way, if they do go for the plus on the Liana, we should have lethal swinging across next turn. And then uh, we're definitely zombie outlander is going to be protection from uh, an abrupt decay like that. So I'll take that. <laughs> Look at that. Each player discards a card. Bye, Blood Scrivener. But yeah, we've got the little zombie outlander and a Videlcan Ghoul <laughs> holding, the, holding the zombie fort down. But yeah, I, I would probably, if you're going to build any of these zombie decks, I'd probably roll with the... Um, I like the black. You know, I am biased. I, I like playing Golgari style decks. That's that's, my, that's kind of what got me into Magic. But I feel that one has the best reach because um, if you do buy into one of these decks, you can buy into the green black zombie deck, and then it can easily port over to some sort of rock green black rock deck or like a Jun deck. Okay, so we've got Cryptic Command on Zombie Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's great. <laughs> Tarmogoy swinging in for four. Okay. Draw into Swamp. Let's go and get the Swamp down. It's coming hot for one. We take care of... No, we're going up top. We're going to close this out. Coming in hot for one. Let's put him down to two. Let's get the Zombie Outlander down. And unfortunately, we're one away from Dread Wanderer. So if we hit the land drop for the turn, we'll definitely be um, be looking out for to, to get Dread Wanderer back out of the graveyard. Okay, so our opponent's in top deck mode. Once again, we've got the Videlican Ghoul swinging in. Each player loses one life. Um, if they want to go for the minus two ability, I'm trying to... If they go for the minus two on Liliana, more than likely target... Play, okay, decision time. They have one card in hand. If we go for the, the Zombie Outlander... Protection from green. We'll be, yeah, let's go ahead and l let's hold on to the protection from green. That puts them on abrupt decay. They can't block with Tarmogoyf. Yeah, let's go ahead and chunk the uh, the ghoul. So we have Zombie Outlander left. That way, they, if, if their top deck was abrupt decay or something, then we can swing in. Oh, Snapcaster. Nice, man. Okay, fair enough. And they do have Snapcaster Fatal Push. I got you, man. <laughs> and then the Black Blue Zombies is completely dismantled now. A little Snapcaster. That was a nice draw by our opponent. Shout out to our opponent. Okay, swinging in for four. It's going to put us down to nine. Let's see what we draw into. Draw into Pluto Delta. Let's go and get that down. Let's go for the Dread Wonder. Get that back out. Now it kind of puts them in a spot where we're going to have Dread Wanderer coming out of the graveyard. They're going to have to leave up Snapcaster. Let's swing in for four. Puts us down to five. So we'll have a little bit of an extra, kind of a, a little bit of a sequencing. We'll see, let's see what we can get into. What kind of shenanigans. Because we're going to swing with Dread Wanderer. That's going to force them to go Snapcaster. And then we can just re bring it back out of the graveyard. And then it's going to have to uh, force them to leave up Tarmogoy. But they're going to be able to plus up uh, Liliana. Each player discards a card. So we'll kind of see. Definitely do not want to crack the Pluto Delta. Because that would put our opponent on a two-turn clock. We're on a three-turn clock right now. Okay. Swing in for four. It's going to put us down to five. You know, if we do draw the Diagraph Ghoul, Di Diagraph Captain, that would kind of put us in spots where if the Dread Wanderer does the Vapor Snag. Okay. Let's go. They have no cards in hand, so let's go and go Vapor Snag on Snapcaster. 
Actually, but if they go for Vapor Snag, on, they can go back and recast Abrupt Decay on the Dread Wanderer. How do we want to sequence this? Okay, so we swing it for two. They chump block on Snapcaster. Let me bring it back out of the graveyard. We could save it for the Tarmogoyf. Let's go ahead and... Let's go on swinging with the Dread Wanderer. So we're going to have each player sacks a creature with the Liliana trigger. It's going to come in hot. Because if we go Snapcast and return it to the hand, then we're going to have a Breath to K coming back out on Dread Wanderer. And they're going to get the creature back. Okay. Let's, let's swing it with Dread Wanderer. Then we can hit spots where we can Vapor Snag on the Tarmogoyf. Snapcaster blocks. It goes to the graveyard. Um, let's go ahead and go. Well, we could bring back the Dread Wonder. Okay, let's go and bring back the Dread Wonder. Yeah, let's do that. Bring back the Dread Wonder. They're going to have Vapor Snag if they do go for the plus ability on Liliana. They may go for the minus two ability, but if they go for the plus ability, they won't be able to send the Vapor Snag back to their hand, especially if they just hit another land and put it down really quick. So we'll see what's going on. Um, they did see va uh, Vapor Snag in the graveyard, so it's something definitely they could play around. Each player discards a card, and they have one card in hand. Um, let's go ahead and send the... Let's go ahead and send the Vapor Snag back up. Send Tarmogoyf back. It's going to stop them from swinging in. They could recast uh, Vapor Snag if they want to. Negate. Nice. Fair enough. Okay. And that was the last card in their hand was Negate. All right, so now if they swing in for four, this is going to put us down to one. Um, they're almost going to have to hold back on Tarmogoyf. Let's see if we got the... Uh, we do. We have the Tarmogoyf <laughs> stalemate. All right, draw into Fatal... Oh, beautiful. I'll take that. Fatal push? Yes. Fatal push on Tarmogoyf. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky. The magic gods are nice to you. Okay, Fatal Push. It's coming hot for two with the Dread Wonder. Just a bunch of draft <laughs> shenanigans over here. Okay, opponent scoops it up. We had Dread Wonder coming across. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Lightbane Zombie. Well, we're pretty heavy on three drops. Um, how do we want to sequence this? Bring in Thought Seize. I did like the Vapor Snag in this matchup. We could go for a Victim of Night. Hmm... I like the Fatal Pushes. Man, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if we want to change it. I like the Zombie Outlander Protection from Green. That's going to help us in the matchup. Videlic and Ghoul. Let's go down on... I could bring in Frexian Obliterate. It's going to be hard for us to get to four, though. Um, I'm afraid that if we go Lifebane Zombie... That, that, this is my, hesita my hesitation right now is deciding if we want to bring in Lifebane Zombie. So if we bring in Lifebane Zombie, it's going to have that Intimidate. The only thing is, you know... What are we going to catch? We're going to catch Tarmogoyf, uh, that is probably going to be down by the time we have Lifebane Zombie. So let's, I'm actually fine with this same matchup right here. Uh, you know, argument could be made for Thought Seize or some Surgical Extractions, but I think I'm okay with this. You know, you kind of, against some of these decks, you just really want to go wide, want to go beat sticks. You know, hope that you can get a nice little spread of one drops down and do a little bit of cleanup duty with a little bit of a Zombie Lord. You know, the curve on this one is kind of nasty. Um... You know, hey, we're doing black blue zombies, and this ain't the the prettiest uh, thing in the magic show. Um, but we've got, uh, you know, you have we have access to a few more zombie lords with this deck in particular. So hopefully we get one of the zombie lords in a nice little hand. But that was a nice little match game one. Okay, as far as opening hand goes, we've got double swamp, we've got uh, gravecrawler, dreadwonder, blood scrivener, and we're not going to be able to we're not going to be online for for Videlic and ghoul. So we're, let's say our opponent has some turn one hand disruption. We have a uh, fatal push for one of their creatures. Dump our hand. We're going to be stuck with Videlic and Ghoul, not really getting into a Blood Scrivener. Let's go ahead and mulligan on this one. Okay, I like this one a little bit better. We'll keep. We have a Feshland Watery Grave. Yeah, let's go and put that on top. We have two Zombie Lords. We have two Watery Graves. I'm okay with that. Okay, get the graveyard squared up. There we go. See if our opponent has any turn one hand disruption, or we're going to see a Seer Vision. So, uh, right now, as it stands, we're going to go Gravecrawler turn one, and then we're going to be online for Diagraph and Lord of the Accursed. Okay, Inquisition of Kozilek. On this one, I would assume, probably Diagraph, or Lord of the Accursed. I mean, if they want to take Gravecrawler, they can. We can simply just get down at the other Gravecrawler and cast it back out of the graveyard. So, um, probably... I guess I would assume, well, you know, depending on what our opponent, uh, is, what they're most, not afraid of technically, but what they don't want to play against, uh, we have a little bit of the Aristocrats action, and then the Menace ability, so. Okay, they offer Lord of the Accursed. Fair enough. Watery Grave, let's go and get the Swamp down. They do not know about the Watery Grave. Let's go Gravecrawler, anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. 
But yeah, that was a uh, pretty nice little top deck. I'll take that. <laughs> that that's that's magic sometimes, man. That happens. All right, the opponent's getting down for one. Might be another yeah, thought sees coming across on the Diagraph Captain, and then we're gonna have Grave Crawler. Grave Crawler beat sticks. It is what it is. Let's go. Oh, go for the Grave Crawler. Fair enough. I'll take that. Catacombs. Let's go and get the uh, Catacombs down. Let's go and swing in for two. Coming in hot. It's going to put him down to 13. Okay. And let's go ahead and cast the zombie out of the graveyard. And then the next turn, um, we can leave up the catacombs. We'll probably go and crack it, grab another watery grave, put that down, just in case our opponent... We didn't see any something like Ghost Quarter, but um, if you have multiple fetches, it never hurts to, you know, on the offside, just kind of grab one of your creatures. Thoughts he's coming across. Going to be Diagraph Captain on that one. We lose out on the Zombie Lord, unfortunately. But with them going double Thought Seize, and they're going down to nine, this is... Um, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Now, if we see Tarmogoyf right now, it's going to be a little bit of a uh, complication for us. So, we'll see exactly what our opponent's getting down. But, well, yeah, we have another fetch line in the hand, so we'll go and crack the catacombs. Jace. Fair enough. I will take that. Let's go and crack. Let's grab the water grave. Put it in play tap. Nope, not going to pay two. Pass the turn. Draw into another swamp. Um, let's go ahead and, I guess at this point, let's go and get the water grave. Put it in play tapped. Let's go and swing it hot for two. I doubt we're going to see it. Well, we might see a Jace block. I don't know. Come in hot for four. Put him down to five if we don't see any blocks. Okay. They might go. Might be going for the uh, the looting on that one. All right. And our opponent is at one, two, three, four. It's going to be four cards in the graveyard. Uh, and then they will have an active Jace after this one, after they discard a card. So, And then as far as the Jace, up to one target creature gets one target creature gets minus two until end of turn. You may cast target instant or sorcery out of your hand. Um, if they want to go for the minus three ability, they do have... Inquisition and Thought Seize, uh, but at this point, yeah, it looks like our opponent's just going to, excuse me, going to try to go zombie control on this one. All right, Tarmogoyf. All right, there we go. Now we have a clock. Now we're looking for some sort of removal, either um, a Fatal Push or Vapor Snack to kind of bounce it back to the hand. <laughs> Tarmogoyf, the fun police. He's like, no more zombies for you, man. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to our opponent for playing Soul Time, man. It's, um... I always enjoy playing Sultai. That is, uh, like, if I were, if if the Magic community were split up into groups of people, and like you're split up by factions, like you know we've got our crazy Rakdos people over here, we've got our fun and creative is it people, I, I would be, uh, man, I, I would, I would campaign for Sultai, man. I, I don't know, just love it. Awesome color group, Blood Scrivener. Okay, let's go ahead and get the Catacombs down. Let's go and swing in for two. We're gonna be able to recast the Gravecrawler if we want to, so I think I'm okay with it at this point. You know, we get into spots where we could potentially um, have some sort of fatal push our opponent doesn't want to play around. But we're just going to be able to cast the Blood Scrivener, cast the other Gravecrawler out of the graveyard. Okay, Gravecrawler hits the graveyard. Let's go ahead and go Gravecrawler again. Let's go Blood Scrivener. And anything else for the turn? No, we just have a Swamp in the hand. I mean, this is kind of how the deck wants to play out. You know, when you get into spots where it's late game, you've got a bunch of 2-1s on the battlefield, there's, you know, the removal's not that great against Gravecrawler. And they are at a 5, uh, they're sitting at 5 life right now, so they're kind of digging just a little bit. So we do have Jace activating on one of them. Um, we can swing in with the other one. And we can swing in with one of our other zombies and get him for two and put him down to three. Now, if we do draw into some sort of removal, that'd be great. We can take care of Tarmogoyf and we'll have an, uh, should have a nice little lethal board state. Okay, Abrupt Decay on the Scrivener. Fair enough. And at this point, we're still just going to go and leave out the Catacombs. We do have Fatal Push in here, so it is not the end of the world. Um... I mean, nothing. It's like we don't have to crack it right now. You know, we're almost better served just leaving it up, just in case we drew on to fatal push, and our opponent has something like uh, Kalitas out there or something. Okay, so we draw into Zombie Outlander, protection from green. I will take that. But they're gonna be able to go for the minus two ability. Let's go to get the swamp down. Let's go Zombie Outlander. Protection from green. Now, that's going to allow us to uh, get away from the Abrupt Decay and stop the Tarmogoyf from swinging in. Now, do we want to push in on this one? We're looking at Jace Ultimate of 9. Um, we swing in, we're just going to see a uh, block from Gravecrawler over there. We can kind of push in again. We have no cards in hand, so it's not really going to matter. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. We'll just go ahead and hold off on this one. Go ahead and pass the turn. They do have one card in hand. They do have an uh, a uh, active crypt, uh, not crypt breaker. <laughs> they do have an active creeping tar pit, so we're gonna have to watch out for that swinging in for three a turn, unblockable. So now, once again, we've got three creatures on the battlefield, and they did make the land drop for the turn, I think. Okay, zombie outlander, fair enough. So right now, 
Hopefully, if we draw into a zombie lord, we're going to be able to get the zombie lord down. It's going to push our grave callers into three twos. It'll also give the zombie outlander a nice little bonus, um, which will allow us to kind of push past the Tarmogoyf and head towards Jace or kind of head over towards our opponent, depending on how we want to sequence it. And the Jace ultimate, again, is uh, whenever whenever you cast a spell, target opponent puts the top five cards in the graveyard. Okay. Draw into Swamp. Let's go get the Swamp down. Well, we want to hold on to it for a second. Let's go ahead and swing in with the, now we, our opponent does have the activation on creeping tar pit, but let's go ahead and swing in with the grave crawler, send him up top to our opponent. We're gonna have zombie outlander on the battlefield, which is a zombie, so it'll allow us to recast it. So I'm not really scared of Jace, so I'm kind of just want to push it, push the uh, push the damage through right now. Coming in hot for four. Might see a tarmogoyf block. Now we do have swamp in the hand. Um, they may kind of complicate how they want to do something, so we're okay with it at this point. <sighs> Hopefully we get in for two. If not, we still have the zombie outlander we can cast out of the graveyard. So that's what makes Gravecrawler so good, man. Get it back up. And at this point in the game, uh, like we know what our deck curves out at. You know, if we draw into another zombie, we need to get it down. Or if we draw into another zombie lord next turn, we'll put the land drop and go from there. So I'm going to go and hold on to the swamp. Uh, maybe there's some sort of uh, disruption in their hand. They want to fire off. They feel like they need to get rid of it. Um... You know, an argument could be made that we should put the the land down to go for Blood Scrivener, but at this point in the game, I always like to, um, I'll do it sometimes, I'll just leave a card in the hand, just to kind of keep our opponent guessing, so that we have some sort of answer. You know, if it's a zombie, we get it down, that way it kind of just at least just throws an extra wrench into their thinking process, and uh, sometimes it can kind of uh, complicate things. Okay, so we got the minus two ability, I mean, uh, yeah, the minus two ability on uh, Zombie Outlander. And we might see a creeping tar pit activation. It's going to be a three-two. So if we swing in with one of the grave crawlers, it's going to be able to block. Okay, they do have two cards in the hand. They're not swinging in with Tarmogoyf. See if we hit that zombie lord. That would be absolutely beautiful. But they're looking ghoul. Well, that is something. Um, let's go ahead and get the ghoul down. Well, we just make sure we have all the zombies that we need. Get that down. Let's go and swing in hot for two with the grave crawlers. Still have enough mana for the grave crawlers. Okay, looks like we have a cryptic command on this one. Cryptic command. The modes are tap creatures, draw a card. Fair enough. So now we're looking at potentially if they have Snapcaster in the hand, we get into the spots where we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. If they hit the land drop next turn, um, and I think at this point. Just in case we get into some Dread Wanderer shenanigans. Yeah, let's, we'll just go and put the Swamp down on this one. Um, just in case, um, you know, if they hit the land drop for the turn, that will put them online for Snapcaster, Cryptic Command, where they can kind of keep us down. Um, but hopefully, if we can hit a Zombie Lord, we're going to put us in a spot to where... So now we've got they've got a complication. They go for minus 9 on Jace, get that ultimate, put 5 cards in the graveyard. That opens us up to Dread Wonder and Gravecrawler. So if they do go for the ultimate 5 cards at a time, that's actually kind of will help us more than anything. Oh, we got a Catacombs Crack. Okay. Uh, but we also have Videlic and Ghoul, so it can swing in. Uh, defending a player loses one life. We also have the Zombie Outlander Protection from Green. So now we're kind of putting them in a spot to where they're going to have to have some, some sort of answer right now to kind of deal with our board state. With them cracking, um, you know, I would assume they'd have something right now. Uh, worst comes to worst, if they want to, they can activate the Creeping Tar Pit, swing it for 7. We've got 4-5 from the Tarmogoyf and a 3-2, so that'll be 7 coming across, put us down to 12. That'll leave them completely open. Okay. And they have not activated Jace yet, I'm pretty sure. No, they've not activated Jace. Okay. Get Videlican Ghoul goes to a minus one. Now, we do have protection from green with the zombie Outlander. They have one card in hand. So it almost puts them on Fatal Push or Snapcaster in the hand. But by getting down the second Tarmogoyf, they, you know, they can block with the zombie Outlander. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. See, we draw into, um, they do have four mana up with one card in the hand, and then we get in the spot where we're just going to push in. Okay, they're tapping, well, okay, here we go. Okay, don't worry, we do see a Snapcaster coming in. Snapcaster on Abrupt Decay, which will take care of, excuse me, Serum Visions. So now we're looking at Zombie Outlander, block on Snapcaster, we've got double block on Gravecrawlers, That'll still keep the zombies out there. If we draw into Death Baron, that would be a beautiful draw. Draw into Catacombs, not the best. Okay. So now if we just swing in right now, we're going to force the block with the Zombie Outlander on Snapcaster. We've got the Gravecrawlers on Tarmogoyf. They can swing in on the back end. We're looking at 4, 8, um, 11 coming across. But if we block, they're going to have to block, and we can just simply recast the, uh, the Gravecrawlers out of the graveyard. Let's go ahead and push in. Protection from green. It'll force the Snapcaster block on the Zombie Outlander. 
if we sit in the Videlican Ghouls, yeah, that's just not going to do anything at this point. Uh, hopefully we can rip something. We're running pretty light on lands in here, so hopefully we'll draw something other than a land on this one. Okay, so we get the Snapcaster on the Zombie Outlander, double block on the Grave Crawlers. And they'll still be able to recast them because they have Videlican Ghoul out there. Let's go ahead and recast them out of the graveyard. We're going to get the catacombs down because if they would have, if we had something, they would have. Uh, <laughs> they know we would have used it during that turn. So we, the the jig is up. There's no bluffing on this one. Okay. Right now, if we, yeah, if we can just hit a zombie lord, that would be nice. It'll kind of help us push. We'll have more blockers than they can deal with. But unfortunately, with the minus ability from Jace, minus two, we're not going to be able to push the Videlican Ghoul into a spot to where it can have a nice little lethal board state. But um, but yeah, you can see where Grave Crawlers. Uh, you know, we we may not win this match I don't, per se, but um, it's been a fun match so far, keeping Tarmogoyf on lockdown with the Videlican Ghoul. Man, <laughs> I love busting out like older. Um, not busting out, but just like older like draft cards or something like that. You just hadn't forgot about. It. It's just it's been sitting in a. Oh, I'm sorry, Kiki. I just kicked my cat. Ooh, Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Okay, that definitely gets the, gets the clock going. Okay, so we got Liliana. Let's see, probably a minus two ability on Liliana. I want to sack a creature, um, and they still have not activated Jace. Each player just cards a card. Okay, going for the four ability. And you get the Jace on the Delican Ghoul. Hopefully, man, Death Baron would be an awesome draw on this. And we'll take care of Tarmogoy. If it puts him in a spot where he can't go for Liliana, oh, draw into another land. Whew. Man. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and if we swing in, we're just going to see more chump blocks from Tarmogoy. Um, Delican Ghoul. Hmm. Yeah, man, it'd just be nice to draw something. You know, we get in a spot where we would even just hit Diagraph Captain, um, and they start sacking with Liliana of the Veil. Uh, we can get that life, uh, that loss of life up there. I guess, you know, it doesn't really matter. We could swing in. They have no cards in hand. Uh, we'll just go and hold off. And then we'll just go and hold on the Water Grave. And we're sitting at five mana, so we're, we're okay on this one. Okay. So Liliana, we're going to have the plus. Oh, actually, we should, excuse me, we should have played that land. No, we have Liliana of the Veil with the plus. So, should have played that. Dark Blast, okay. That's going to take care of the ghoul. And now, the problem is Dark Blast is going to be in the graveyard. They're going to have that nice little dredge ability. So, it's going to allow them to um, get in the spot that we can really start taking, picking off our grave crawlers. Oh, man, if we just hadn't just uh, run lane, 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 lane. But, hey, that's magic sometimes. We top deck last time, and it's our turn to be a little bit flooded on this one. Ship it over to game two. <laughs> But yeah, we should have played that Watery Grave. That, that's my mistake right there. I just temporarily forgot about the Liliana. Okay, so we have the Jace. It's actually pretty good that they went for this ability with the Jace ability uh, because it allows us to fill our graveyard with the uh, the Grave Crawlers and the um, Grave Crawlers and the Dread Wonders out of the graveyard. Start bringing them back, especially if we're going Hellbent. So, all right, swinging so in hot for the Creeping Tar Pit. It's gonna put us down to 16, which I'm okay if they're going for the Creeping Tar Pit. We still, hopefully, we can close this one out. We'll go for it. Blood Scrivener. I'll take that. Let's go and get the Blood Scrivener down. Let's go and get, well, we can swing it for two if we want to. We're just going to see Tarmogor jump blocks. Okay, let's go and pass turn. More than likely, we're going to see a dredge on Dark Blast to take care of the Scrivener to make sure that we don't get ahead on lands. I'm going to get ahead on card draw. So we'll probably see that line. Um, it kind of puts them into a spot to where hopefully we can, um, if we can just hit uh, Death Baron and start swinging it with the zombies. Okay. Let's see, we do hit Dread Wander out of the graveyard. I'll take that. Scrivener's in the graveyard. It puts us in a spot to where, you know, if we if we get enough uh, one drops out of the graveyard, you know, we already got Dread Wanderer coming back. Each player discards a card. They do go to a 5 6. I'm curious what they hit. It looks like they hit, um, I'm not sure what they hit that made it different on that one. They kind of get into spot now where they can almost start. Well, no, excuse me, they're at 2 life. Um, they don't want to go for the. Oh, see, yeah, they're swinging in for 5. Okay. Coming in hot, put us down to 11. Drawn to Videlican Ghoul. Okay, let's go and get the Ghoul down. Let's go and go Dread Wanderer. Okay, so now Liliana's at 6. You know, um, they can go for the minus 6 ability and get an ultimate on that. Um, do we want to... Yeah, let's go and uh, we'll just go and pass it over. 
So he's the one to go for. So if they go for the minus of six ability, they could split our zombies up and our lanes up. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they want to go for that. We do have the Videlkin Ghoul down. And we still have the, the Dread Wonder on the graveyard. So I would see, if they go for the Liliana, Liliana Ultimate, we're probably looking at a... Uh, get the Dark Blast again, okay. On the Videlkin. <laughs> Just picking picking the zombies apart, man. <laughs> and we, we hit another Dread Wonder out of the graveyard too, so I'll take that. And then actually, we're looking at 510. That's going to be actually lethal with the uh, Creeping Tar Pit. Yeah, good game, man. Man, it's just if we could hit one of our zombie lords, that'd have been nice. But we did top deck earlier, so hey, that's magic. Sometimes that happens. All right, coming in hot for the game. Good game, buddy. And they're gonna close this one out. All right, let's send this one over to sideboarding. Anything else we want to do? Uh, I think I'm okay. I, I like the matchup as it is. Hopefully, we can just uh, not just go land, land, land with a bunch of <laughs> non zombies in the hand. Send this one back. There we go. But yeah, this is uh, it's fun putting in some work with some Videlican Ghouls. I, I don't know. It's just a card that um, <laughs> you can put some pressure on your opponent. And you, I think I laugh because I know Videlican Ghouls have just been sitting in a uh, in a draft box back in the closet for like <laughs> like three or four, just a couple years, just sitting there chilling, hadn't been putting in any decks. So here we are, man. Hey, shout out, man. You're doing you're doing an awesome job. It's always fun giving older cards a nice little uh, spot in the spotlight. Okay, uh, looks like our opponent's maybe changing some stuff, so I'll, um, well, do we want to pause the video? Yeah, I'll go and pause the video until we hit the game three. Okay. Oh, cool, never mind. <laughs> I do that sometimes if our opponent's changing a lot of stuff out, because sometimes it's just like 30 seconds of dead air, but we will not be pausing it. Let's go and play first. All right, let's check out our opening hand. We have Liliana, Crit Breaker. Yes, I like this. We have a couple fetch lands. I, indeed. Now, if our opponent does have some sort of early hand disruption, that will be a bummer, but at least we're going to be able to get the Crit Breaker down and get into a spot to where we'll have a little bit of card draw, hopefully. If we had another one-drop zombie, we'd be online for activating and kind of go for... Okay, Creeping Tar Pit. I'll take that. Diagraph Ghoul. Okay, let's go ahead and get the Catacombs down. Let's go ahead and crack that. Let's grab the... Let's go ahead and get our, the Watery Grave Shock out of the way. Let's go ahead and go Dread Wanderer. Let's go Diagraph Ghoul. And it's going to come in hot for one. Since the Dread Wanderer... Both of those zombies come into play tap, we were really far away from a Crypt Breaker Act... Crit Breaker activation, so we're going to go and swing in for one, put our opponent down to 19. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. All right, so next turn, if they have some sort of Thought Seize, Inquisition of Kozilek, they'll be able to take care of Liliana, which it looks like we might be seeing that, unless it's Fatal Push, which it was Fatal Push. And then the Catacombs. All right, and then we'll be able to get down Liliana and kind of go from there. Let's go and get the Swamp down. What we can do is, well, do we want to... No, let's go and get Liliana. We want to get her on the battlefield. And then we don't have to worry about Negate or anything. Let's get Liliana down. Excuse me, sorry, I took a drink of tea and there was a little bit of uh, loose leaf at the bottom. Okay, Liliana, let's go and plus on Liliana. Each player discards a card. We're going to be able to discard the Gravecrawler, which allows us to recast it. Oh, yeah, look at Value City right there. Gravecrawler hits the graveyard. Let's go and swing in hot for four. It's going to put our opponent down to 14. Now, if they follow up with something like Tarmogwaf, we do have the minus two ability from Liliana and kind of keep them under control. But yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, you know, game one, we did win with our uh, top deck, which I'll take that. And then game two, we kind of flooded out, but um, hey, that happens. That's magic sometimes. So that's, the, that's what makes magic fun is you have those exciting top deck games and then you have those, uh, you have the lows of magic where you just draw nothing but lands. So you got to remember both of them. Okay, so we got Snapcaster coming in, Fatal Push. Uh, I would assume on the Diagraph, because that's not going to be able to... It's the only one we can't cast it out of the graveyard. Okay, Fatal Push on the Diagraph. Fair enough. So we're probably going to go... They have four cards in hand. Let's go ahead and go for the minus two ability on Liliana. I, I want to get in for two on this one. Lord of the Accursed. Okay, let's go and get the Catacombs down. Let's go Target Player, Sacks a Creature. It's going to take care of Snapcaster. We're going to be able to get the Lord of the Accursed down. Let's go and crack the Catacombs. Get a Swamp down. Lord of the Accursed. Let's go and cast the Gravecrawler out of the graveyard. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. Let's go and swing in hot for three. It's going to put him down to 11. This is how the deck's supposed to kind of rock and roll, man. Turn those one drops into nice little 3-2 bodies. Anything else? No. Okay, we're going to go and pass turn. Alright, so we have Liliana. Uh, if they get another creature down, we have the minus two ability. Um, with them getting the fourth land drop down, that does turn them online for Creeping Tar Pit activation. So, well, actually they're off now that they go for the Creeping Tar Pit. But next turn, we're looking at six and then eight coming across, which is going to put them down to three. So we'll see what kind of board state they get out. But uh, either way, man, this has been a nice little match. Uh, just, just a little bit of a heads up. I do record in the tournament practice room. If I'm playing a modern deck that is not, um, I hate saying it's not good. 
mean, because there are modern decks that are not good, but it sounds negative. But this is sef- definitely not a tiered modern deck. You would not take this to a uh, Grand Prix event. Okay, opponent scoops it up. I guess they don't like what's in their hand. And we've got a nice little board state developed with Gravecrawler and Dreadwonder and Lord of the Accursed. Putting in some work. I will definitely take that. Hey, shout out to, uh, what is it? Videlican Ghoul for putting in some work in this matchup. So I'll take this. But uh, yeah, I always enjoy playing against Soul Tide. It's always a nice little matchup. So, all right, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks.